Welcome to Tala Talks NICU. So this is the first of a kind of a whole series where we just go through uh, different gas each week and talk about what's wrong with it and what we may have to do to make it right. So this is kind of building on the three videos on the gases. So if you haven't seen those, go back and look at them. So look at this gas, it doesn't look very pretty. So we have a pH of 6.97, a CO2 of 155, crazy elevated, an oxygen of 35, bicarb is 22, and the base is minus 1.5. So first of all, I don't know if this is arterial, venous, or capillary. So for the time being, I'm going to ignore the oxygen, the PO2, because really that only matters if it is a arterial sample. So for now, I'm going to just kind of concentrate on everything else. So what's the first thing I look at? The first thing I look at is the pH. Now the pH here is 6.97. 6.97 is way less than 7.4. So this is a very acidic blood gas sample. So we have acidosis here. So now the next thing that I want to know is, is why do we have acidosis? Is it respiratory in origin or is it metabolic in origin? Okay, so now we'll look at the respiratory component. This is massively elevated. So a normal CO2 is 35 to 45. We allow that to go a lot higher in micropremies and premies just because we have kind of permissive hypercarbia. We want them to just not have to push them too hard with their ventilatory support. But still, 155 is a crazy high number. So definitely we have significant respiratory acidosis. What about the base and the bicarb here? A bicarb of 22 is actually very normal for a baby. So really between 20 and 24 um, mill equivalents of bicarb is normal for a baby. And a base, that's a completely normal base as well. If it was less than minus three or more than plus three, then we would worry, be worried about metabolic acidosis or metabolic alkalosis. In this case, it seems very normal. So what can we say about this? We have an acidosis, which is respiratory, but our base is completely normal. There is no compensation by the kidneys. So normally, as we all learned in the last videos, if you do have one system going completely one way, then generally the other system, if it can, will go the other way trying to correct it. So what can we say in this situation? The CO2 is so off but the bicarb and the base are pretty normal. So most likely what's happened here is that we haven't had enough time for metabolic compensation to happen. So the kidneys right now are probably starting to retain their bicarb to try to get some metabolic alkalosis, but maybe this has only been going on for an hour or two. And so really it just hasn't had enough time to compensate, which is why our pH is so horrible. So now what do we do about it? So we've decided that this is a um, respiratory acidosis. So an acidosis because of underventilation for respiratory reasons. We're assuming that it's a pretty acute event because the kidneys haven't had enough time to compensate. So this is probably something that happened pretty recently. So what would cause a baby to suddenly get a CO2 that's so high? it would have to go along with severe underventilation. So maybe the baby has just stopped breathing or the baby was you know, breathing happily on CPAP or something and then we severely sedated the baby and the baby stopped taking breaths or the breaths were really, really shallow. Because remember, ventilation is dependent on tidal volume, so how deeply you breathe as well as rate, how rapidly you breathe. So if the baby was breathing rapidly and deeply and then suddenly is just like apneic, then the CO2 is going to build up. And again, something very sudden must have happened for the CO2 to be suddenly so elevated with no compensation at all. So it would have to be something like the baby suddenly becoming apneic. Because it is such an elevated carbon dioxide, this probably wouldn't be a situation where I'd be like, okay, well, let's just increase the rate by 10. I mean, it is so high 
that we want to make sure that we're not missing anything else or we don't just want to go up on the pip a little bit to try to improve the tidal volume again because this is such an abnormally high carbon dioxide so what we would probably do in this situation is get an x-ray of the baby because very often when a carbon dioxide is suddenly so high it can indicate that this could be something mechanical going on and one of the most common things that we see mechanically happening with an elevated CO2 with a baby otherwise appearing well, the oxygenation is kind of trucking along the same, is that the ET tube is either blocked or T deep. So just think about it, if it's blocked, then none of that CO2 can get out. The oxygen that's in the lungs is kind of stuck in there. So it's going to take a little bit of time for this baby to become hypoxemic, but that CO2 can go up very, very quickly. If the uh, ET tube is too deep, it will go down the right bronchus. So basically, you're trapping all of the CO2 from one side of the lung. And again, that's another reason why you could suddenly have a very elevated carbon dioxide. So in a baby like this, probably the first thing that we do is check the patency of the tube, make sure that there isn't a huge plug in there, make sure that there aren't any secretions, and then get a chest x-ray. As we would expect, we had this gas on a baby, we went ahead and got a chest x-ray, and the ET tube was way too deep. We pulled it back, the next gas was basically almost normal. So remember, you don't just look at the gas, you look at the baby, and you look at all other signs and symptoms as well, including, if necessary, an x-ray.